you will you will be able to tell when this helicopter is ready to drop its first swimmer it will descend from a position of about 50 feet above the water quite low just over the water about 10 feet high move in slowly just downwind of the command module and you will see a man in full scuba gear drop out now to determine the wind positions for yourselves keep an eye on the smoke light watch the smoke because that is what the helicopter pilots and the ship the ship's command are watching the first man out will be uh, setting forth a what's called a sea anchor it is uh, made of uh, nylon material shaped like a small parachute or umbrella but it has a hole in the top and a line is attached at the widest part which is eight feet in diameter which is then secured to a pad eye on the command module so that as it's pulled through the water by the drifting command module the underwater resistance of the sea anchor fabric tends to hold it back hence the name sea anchor this is a vital part today because of the fact that the wind is so strong, which causes, in part, the heavy seas. The uh, pull of the anchor as it's dragged along underwater by the command module slows its drift down to about half of what it was. Uh, if we did not have that sea anchor, which will be shortly attached, the command module would probably be drifting faster than the swimmers could catch up to it. We've been advised that swim helicopter number one is now ready to deploy its first swimmer, and the astronauts say they are ready to receive that swimmer. They are ready to get off the ocean. The command module is just off the starboard side of the ship now. We're still moving along. We'll get a little farther away from it, and the ship will make a U-turn, as I said, and swing back around, and we should pull within, oh, about 400 or 500 yards of it. We will have a very good picture, I would imagine. Stand by later, for a little later. Peter, the sea anchor, I understand, cuts the drift of the command module by more than 50%. Now, that module drifts along at about 10% of the wind velocity. So with winds of up to 22 miles an hour out there right now, we would have a drift rate of 2.2 miles an hour without the sea anchor, which would be too fast for one of the swimmers to stay abreast of. And the anchor will cut that Drift. Dick Gordon just reported to Mission Control that they're ready to receive the first swimmer and passed up the word, everybody's okay. Just to make sure that it does not get away from them. Give you an idea of how the operation is full of redundancies and backups. The helicopters today are carrying no less than eight sea anchors, just in case. And if the wind is too strong, they have a special rig which allows them to attach two sea anchors. All right, we have a swim helicopter going in low, and we should be getting a drop quite soon now. That helicopter will ascend, as I said, to about 10 feet. And a man will emerge with full scuba gear on, wearing one tank. It's down, just above the water now. Almost ready to Going in at about 10 knots. Just downwind of the module. There's a man into the water. There he goes. There's the a swimmer into the water. The swimmer was... The swimmer was Bill Posey. He's a Californian, Peter. He's a member of the underwater demolition team number 13. That is... Rotor wash from the rotors of the helicopters is uh, something of a hindrance to the swimmer, particularly on the day. 
So the helicopters uh, stay clear as best they can. They come in and drop whatever is necessary or pick up what's necessary and then move away just enough so that the rotor wash is clear of the swimmers and the spacecraft. The first operation, as we said, is the attachment of this sea anchor. The collar, the flotation collar, now in its folded up, deflated uh, position in a bag, has also been dropped and is now being attached or being worked toward the command module. Uh, actually, by our monitors here and being able to overhear the conversation of mission control, we can sometimes hear and see things that our men aboard the carrier cannot. There are actually three swimmers in the, ro in the water, in addition to uh, Posey, whose name they gave you. There are William C. Robertson and R.L. Nash. So we have three swimmers in the water at the present time. And let's see if we can pick up the helicopter pilot. Okay, the collar is approximately two-thirds around the command module. All operations progressing The flotation collar is pulled out uh, one side at a time and uh, pulled around with a bungee with bungee lines. Uh, two air bottles uh, will inflate it. This is a process familiar to all of you who watched the previous recovery operations. The attaching of a large flotation collar or inflated inflatable device to help hold the uh, spacecraft oh, no, 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 no. you'll see essentially a repetition of the procedures they went through with uh, Apollo 11. Word again is that they are proceeding normally. Some of the swimmers will have to um, pass in some special garments to the crew inside, part of their um, quarantine process. There will be a little scrubbing going on to disinfect them, as it were. Well, there's no evidence so far that they've been infected. Special suits they'll be handed this time uh, vary considerably from those that were used on the first uh, landing after a moon trip. Much simpler, and we're told much easier to get into and out of.
commentary here from the helicopter pilot. Saying they're about ready to drop off one raft. And these two have been redesigned so they don't tip over so easily and uh, so easily in the blast from the rotors of the helicopter or from the seas. First of three rafts will be deployed very shortly.